Hi, this is Yas True and Manos Brilakis presenting case 117 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of refractory stent under expansion. The patient had previous coronary bypass 16 years prior and then had multiple percutaneous coronary interventions to the right coronary artery in the LAD. The last one was performed two months prior, at which time the patient presented with a non ST elevation myocardial infarction. He had balloon angioplasty of the right coronary and the LAD, and he was referred to our center for performing brachytherapy. This is the initial diagnostic angiogram of the right coronary artery. Often in patients like this who are referred for brachytherapy, there is significant underlying disease requiring extensive treatment, and that is why we used femoral access with a large guide, which came in handy as we will see subsequently. There was already severe instant restenosis of the distal right coronary artery. So we wired the vessel, but then had difficulty advancing balloons through the proximal RCA. And this is a vessel that has been stented all the way to the ostium. When that happens, chances are that the wire has crossed under a stent strut, and the solution is to rewire using a loop. And this is exactly what we did and we were then able to easily advance uh, balloons and uh, other equipment to the distal right coronary artery. After that, we performed intravascular ultrasound that demonstrated there was stent under expansion distally with a minimum lumen area of 4.3 millimeters square. There was some restenosis more proximally, but the stent appeared to be well expanded. So the distal RCA was the trouble lesion. How to treat balloon undilatable in stent lesion? The first step is to use high pressure balloons and plaque modification balloons. And this is exactly what we did. Several non-compliant balloons who used an angioscalp as well as non-compliant balloons with the body wire. We can see the waste in the balloon. And then we performed once again intravascular ultrasound. And sure enough, there was still stent under expansion in this segment in the distal right coronary artery. This is uh, the distal in the PDA PLV bifurcation coming more proximally. There is the stent, and there is the area of severe under expansion that is fairly focal, with the stent more proximally being well expanded. So, what to do next? Uh, this did not work. We decided to try a thorectomy. And this was done with a 1.5 millimeter bear. Actually, the bear was easily going through that area. Um, we also used a temporary pacemaker for this. After this did not work, then we decided to do laser. And this is laser with contrast. This is the 0.9 millimeter laser that is activated with simultaneous contrast injection that causes an acoustico-mechanical effect that can modify the plaque and help expand the lesion. But unfortunately, it did not work. There remained a waste, there remained under expansion, under intravascular ultrasound. So we used another plaque modification balloon, a chocolate balloon. Once again, there is a waste in the balloon. Also, the patient did not really tolerate well the laser. There was transient ST segment elevation when laser was being activated. Intravascular ultrasound can be very useful. And once again, we can see here, this is the bifurcation distally coming more proximally. And this is the area of under expansion, which remains essentially unchanged. We decided to use intravascular lithotripsy. This is the peripheral balloon 3.0 by 40 millimeters that was inserted distally and then inflated at four atmospheres. Then we gave the full 200 pulses of the balloon, but unfortunately, that did not work as well. There remained a waste, and after postulation, the same problem persisted. So we decided to go larger on the rotablator and did a 1.75 millimeter burr. But once again, there was um, no improvement. There was still a waste in the balloon. And uh, again, the IVUS, which is critical for such lesions, so exact same area of under expansion with good expansion distally and proximally. A recent paper by Carl Alasved he has shown that orbital atherectomy can be useful in such lesions with 95% success. So we decided to use orbital atherectomy, which was done both at low as well as at high speed with multiple passes. 
and uh, followed by, once again, high-pressure balloon inflations. And actually, and geographically, this looks much better. And for a second, we thought that we were actually successful in expanding the lesion. But of course, IVUS was done, and IVUS uh, was actually unchanged. We still have uh, the same um, area of under-expansion, although the expansion is much better distally as well as proximally. We decided to do brachytherapy anyway, which uh, is why the patient was referred to us in the first place. And this was done with a 60 millimeter train all the way from the distal RCA to the ostium. And then this is the final intravascular ultrasound. There is still that area of under expansion. The area, the minimum area was 4.5, which is similar to the 4.3 that it was at the beginning of the case although the vessel proximally and distally is much better expanded. This case provides several useful lessons. The first one is that intravascular imaging is critical in cases of stent failure in stent restenosis in our patient, because often the vessel may be underexpanded, and this may not always be apparent by angiography. Actually, at the end, we thought we had a fairly nice result, but intravascular ultrasound demonstrated that we were still severely underexpanded. The other one is the importance of having a systematic algorithm for treating stent under expansion. This starts with high pressure balloon inflation, use of plaque modification balloons, followed by laser with contrast. Then atherectomy can be done. Also, intravascular lithotripsy can be done off label. And then the final technique that was not used in this case is to go subintimal and crush the lesion and place stents in the subintimal space, this uh, was not a promising option for this particular patient because there was a bifurcation distally, so going subintimal carried the risk of compromising the bifurcation in one of the two branches. So in summary, stent under expansion is one of the key mechanisms of in-stent restenosis. Successfully expanding the stent is important to prevent recurrent in-stent restenosis, and this can usually be achieved by using a variety of balloons and plaque modification techniques. But in some cases, like this one, all these techniques may fail. Thank you very much.